From France to The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the 1990s were a golden age for sitcoms. We laughed our way through every episode, and we loved the characters like they were basically part of our own family. But in reality, things eventually come to an end. In this video, we'll be looking at 90s sitcom stars you probably did not know have died. So let's get into the video. First up, Naya Rivera. Rivera is mostly remembered for her iconic role as Santana Lopez on the hit TV show Glee, but she had a long career in Hollywood before then, starting with her childhood role as Hilary Winston on the 19th comedy The Royal Family. She was only four years old when the show ended abruptly because of the sudden death of its star, Red Fox, who suffered a heart attack on set. Rivera later went on to appear in other sitcoms such as The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Family Matters. Even though she was young, it seems Rivera's experience with the tragedy of Fox's death stayed with her for a long time and likely had some influence on her own career and the business. Naya Rivera's disappearance was a tragedy that touched the hearts of many. It all happened so suddenly on July 8, 2020, while she and her four-year-old son were out boating on a Southern California lake. When it became clear Naya was nowhere to be seen, friends, family, and fans alike came together in grief to help search for the actor. The authorities combed through the lake, but it wasn't until almost a week later that her body was finally found. It was one of the craziest things ever, and it shook many of us to our core. As we now know, Naya probably sacrificed herself in an attempt to save her son, a hero to the very end. Up next, James Avery. James Avery made a name for himself in the 80s, starring in various TV shows and movies. He was arguably most popular for his portrayal of Philip Banks on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. His role as Uncle Phil earned him a lot of love from his fans, who loved his tough love approach. After the show ended, he went on to play iconic characters like Shredder in the original anime Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show and other projects throughout his career. The news of James Avery's death on New Year's Eve 2013 came as a heartbreaking shock to the world. The 65-year-old actor had been hospitalized because of complications from open-heart surgery earlier in the year as well as other existing medical conditions such as kidney illness and diabetes. As news spread of his passing, an outpouring of love and support filled social media. Many of his co-stars, including Will Smith, Smith took to the internet to share their fond memories and lessons learned from Avery. Coming up, Earl Heinemann. Throughout the eight seasons of the hit TV show Home Improvement, fans were most familiar with one character who was rarely ever seen. Earl Heinemann's Wilson W. Wilson Jr. Just like a guardian angel, Wilson served as an advisor to the main character Tim Taylor and his face was typically hidden by their shared fence. His whole face wasn't revealed until the series finale, although Home Improvement would sometimes teased the audience by showing his lower half. But Earl Hindman wasn't just known for playing Wilson. He had quite a career in film and television. Ever since the late 1960s, he has been appearing in various supporting roles on TV shows, such as Spencer, For Hire, and The Equalizer. He also had some lead roles on the big screen, including Taps and Silverado. It was a sad day for all Home Improvement fans when it was announced that Earl Hindman had passed away in December 2003. He was 61 years old at the time of his death and had been dealing with complications from lung cancer. Moving on, Merlin Santana. Merlin Santana had a long and successful career in comedy that was cut tragically short when he died at the young age of 26. He first made an impression as Stanley, the Hux Tables' youngest daughter's boyfriend on The Cosby Show in the early 1990s, but it was his role as Marcus, one of the main characters in Getting By, a short-lived comedy series about two single mothers and their children that gained him the most fame. His final regular comedic role was as Romeo Santana on The Steve Harvey Show, and he made it count. Unfortunately, though, just one year after the show wrapped up, Merlin was killed in a drive-by shooting when Damien Andre Gates shot him in the head. Gates was totally convinced that Santana had been making sexual advances toward his then-girlfriend, Monique King, who was a minor. He felt he had no choice but to take matters into his own hands and end the situation for good. So, he shot Santana while he was in the car with Monique King. He ended up getting three consecutive life terms and 70 years in jail. Coming up, Dustin Diamond. Dustin Diamond's relationship with fame was pretty rocky. While he had incredible success in the late 80s and early 90s for his role as Screech Powers in Saved by the Bell, that momentum didn't carry him into adulthood. This is a pretty common struggle for many child actors, struggling to cope with their newfound celebrity status, transitioning from being on a hit show to living a normal life again. To keep his name in the spotlight, Diamond 
Management took on some more controversial roles such as reality TV shows and cameos in movies that attempted to use his celebrity status for their own gain. Despite his success, Diamond had several personal issues that damaged his public image. One of the biggest was a fake sex tape scandal he made, which he says was probably the most humiliating moment of his life. This incident, along with other controversies surrounding him, including unpaid taxes and arrests for disorderly conduct, tarnished Diamond's image forever. Diamond's death was a shock to many of his fans and friends, particularly as he had never seemed sick before. In the weeks leading up to his diagnosis, Diamond had been complaining about pain all over his body, but it wasn't until visiting the hospital that he found out he had stage 4 cancer. After undergoing chemotherapy for several weeks, Diamond was unable to fight off the disease and passed away in early January 2021. Next, John Ritter. John Ritter was an iconic figure in American television for decades. His most memorable role was undoubtedly Jack Tripper on the classic show Three's Company. But his career didn't end there. He and Hooperman later invented the term dramedy to describe comedic shows with a little more depth. He also had a prominent role in the political satire Hearts Afire, where he starred as senatorial aide John Hartman. And who could forget his heart-wrenching performance as Vaughn, the store owner and concerned friend in the Oscar-winning Sling Blade? John Ritter was a talented actor with an undeniable presence on America's television screens for nearly four decades. John Ritter's death was a major shock to his family, friends, and fans. On the morning of September 11, 2003, he was rehearsing for the sitcom Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter when he suddenly started vomiting and complaining about chest pain. He was immediately rushed to Providence St. Joseph Medical Center in Burbank, California, where doctors initially suspected he'd suffered a heart attack. But after further examination, doctors determined that Ritter had actually torn his aorta and was in need of immediate surgery to save his life. But despite the medical team's tireless efforts, John Ritter sadly passed away during the procedure. He was only 54 years old at the time of his death. Finally, Lisa Robin Kelly. Lisa Robin Kelly was best known for her performance as Eric Foreman's older sister Lori on the hit show That 70s Show. She played the role of Kelso's other girl for five seasons until Christina Moore took over in season six. In 2012, Kelly told ABC News that she had to leave the show due to her drinking problem. She said she began abusing alcohol after suffering a miscarriage, which was the only thing that gave her solace in that difficult time. Unfortunately, Kelly never got the chance for a comeback because of her frequent run-ins with the law. In 2010 and 2013, she was arrested and charged with DUI in North Carolina and California, respectively. She was also arrested in 2013 for allegedly parking her car on the I-5 motorway blocking a lane of traffic. Kelly's addiction struggles were a complete roller coaster. In March 2012, it was reported that she had committed an act of physical harm to a spouse and in response, both Kelly and her husband, Robert Joseph Gilliam, were arrested during an apparent domestic dispute. This wasn't the first time she had been arrested for such acts. Earlier in 2011, she was arrested for two separate cases of domestic violence. Unfortunately, Kelly's journey with addiction and the road to recovery didn't end well. In August 2013, she died at 43 while in the midst of treatment for her addiction. The Los Angeles County coroner ruled her death as an accidental multiple drug intoxication. That's a wrap for today's video. Were there any 90s sitcom stars we might have missed? Make sure to let us know in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button for more videos like this one. We'll see you in the next one.